In this video, we're going to be looking for an ideal that is a prime ideal, but not a maximal ideal. I want to start by reminding you of what the two definitions are. An ideal I is a maximal ideal of a ring R, if and only if we have the property that if J is an ideal and I is a subset of J, then we can conclude either that I is equal to J or that J is equal to R. In other words, there are no intermediate ideals between I and R that contain I as a proper subset. If we look at the definition of a prime ideal, it looks like this. I is a prime ideal of R, if and only if we have the property that if the product A times B is inside I, then we can conclude either A is an I or B is an I. In other words, if a product belongs to the ideal, one of the two factors must belong to the ideal. Now to find an ideal that is a prime ideal but not maximal, we need to look at a polynomial ring. So we are going to let our main ring R be z square bracket x, which is just the ring of polynomials with coefficients drawn from z. So this is the set of polynomials with coefficients in z. And I'm going to let i be the set of polynomials in z square bracket x with constant term equal to 0. So x cubed plus 5x does belong to i, but uh, 5x cubed minus 17 does not belong to i. Now, it is an easy exercise to show that i is an ideal of the ring z square bracket x. And I would encourage you to stop the video and show that for yourself before continuing. Um, so hopefully you've done that. Now, my claim is this. I is a prime ideal in z square bracket x, but I is not a maximal ideal in z square bracket x. So we have to show that i is prime, and we also have to find an ideal that contains i as a proper subset that's not the full ring. So let's look at the first claim. Why is i a prime ideal of z square bracket x? Well, let's suppose that p of x times q of x does indeed belong to i. Um, and uh, what I can think of is I know that p of x is somebody inside z square bracket x, so I can write him as a n x to the n plus all the way down to a1 times x plus a0. And uh, q is also inside z square bracket x, so q would look like this. And I also know this. I know that p of x times q of x is just the product formed by multiplying these two polynomials together. Symbolically, it's that polynomial times this one. And what I want to do is I want to notice that I can pick off the constant without computing the whole polynomial. The constant term of p of x times q of x is always going to be the constant for p of x times the constant for q of x. In other words, the only way to get a constant term if I multiply this stuff with this stuff is to multiply 
a0 times b0. Because if I multiply any of these terms by any of these, including b0, I'm going to have an x to some power. And if I multiply that a0 by any of these terms, except for b0, I will have some x power. So the constant term of a product is easy. It's just the product of the constants. So that means it's a0 times b0. But we also know, remember, that the product is inside i, and that says a0 times b0 has to be equal to 0. And this is because p of x times q of x is known to be inside i. But this particular equation here is enough to say a0 is equal to 0 or b0 is equal to 0 because a0 and b0 belong to the integers themselves. In other words, this equation is an equation inside of z. Well, let's see. We're almost done. a0 equals 0 will imply that p of x belongs to i, and b0 equal to 0 will imply that q of x belongs to i. So what we have indeed shown is that if p of x times q of x belongs to i, then either p of x belongs to i or q of x belongs to i. And that says i is a prime ideal. Now the question becomes, is i a maximal ideal? And I claim that I is not a maximal ideal. So the claim is I is not a maximal ideal. Now, I have to find a j that is a subset of z square bracket x such that i is a proper subset of j, and j is a proper subset of z square bracket x, and j is an ideal. Now, I don't want to work too hard. I'm going to use a lot of the stuff that I know about polynomials to get an idea of what I want j to be. j is going to be all of the polynomials in z square bracket x with a constant term that is even. So something like x cubed plus 5x plus 10 belongs to j but something like x cubed plus 3 does not belong to j. Uh, since 0 is an even number, it's very clear that i is indeed a subset of j, and it's a proper subset because this guy here is not inside i. Uh, so we know that i is a proper subset of j. So the question is, is j an ideal inside z square bracket x? Well, in order to investigate that, we have to first, we have to show two things. The first one is, is if we look at two polynomials that belong to j, we need to show their difference belongs to j. Well, the proof of that's not difficult. Uh, basically, what we know is that p of x ends in an even number. So I'm going to write this as 2 times something. So this is the constant term 
for p of x. And q of x has to have some kind of form that looks like this. And it will have 2 times something. So this is the constant term for q of x. And it turns out that when we look at p of x minus q of x, uh, while some of these terms might cancel, the constant term of this guy will be equal to the constant term of p of x minus the constant term of q of x. So the constant term of the difference is going to be 2a0 minus 2b0. That's 2 times a0 minus b0, and that is even. So p of x minus q of x does indeed belong to j. So j has the first property that we have to have in order for j to be an ideal. So let's turn our attention to the second property. We also need to show that if p of x is any element in the big ring, which is z square bracket x, and q of x is anything inside the set j, we need to show that if that's true, then the product p of x times q of x also belongs to j. And the proof of that is not very hard. And it's based, again, on what we know about constant terms when we're doing polynomial arithmetic. We're going to let p of x be any polynomial with integer coefficients. So it has this kind of an expression. And all I know about a0 is that a0 is an integer. And q of x is going to look like this. Now q of x is inside j, so q of x has an even constant term. So I'm going to write q of x's constant term as 2 times something. The constant term of q of x is even since q of x is known to be in set j. Well, once I have these two polynomials written out as polynomial expressions, I know how to compute p of x times q of x. p of x times q of x will simply be this polynomial here times this polynomial here. The constant term is 2b0. Now, I'm really interested in just the constant term of p of x times q of x. And the constant term of the product polynomial is going to be the constant term of p of x times the constant term of q of x. And the reason why is pretty simple. If I multiply any of these higher order terms by anything in this expression, there's going to be an x, so that won't be a constant term. And likewise, if I multiply this a0 by anything except the constant term there, we're going to have an x. So that's not going to be a constant term. The only way we're going to get a constant term is to multiply the a0 by the 2 times b0. So in other words, the constant term of the product is going to be a0 times 2b0, but that's 2 times a0 b0, which is even. And that's enough to say that p of x times q of x does indeed belong to j. So j is an ideal, 
and i is a proper subset of j, and j is clearly a proper subset of z square bracket x. And what that means is that our set of polynomials with constant term equal to zero is a prime ideal, but not a maximal ideal. And that ends this video.